They will congregate into the foyer, they haven't seen each other for a while, and they start talking, hey, how you going? How's your family? How's your mum? I haven't seen for ages, da 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 da. Don't forget to sit down. Love you guys, thank you. Cha, bye, 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 bye. So that was Mr. George Capanaris. He was my hero. And mm. now I'm getting a call from him before I'm about to go on to wish me good luck, you know, that's just really nice. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the funniest comedians in the world for his 20th anniversary tour, welcome him back, one of our own, Mr. Joe Avati. Oh, so good to be here. So good. To, it's my hometown. I'm home. Thank you. It's great to be doing this at home. I, uh, uh, you know what the funny thing is though. You know, it doesn't matter where you go in the world, what you do. I, I said to Dad, like this show has been sold out for weeks and weeks, as you know. And uh, and I said to Dad, I said, Dad, guess what? You know, we're doing the 20th anniversary tour. Yeah, and, and we're doing it at the Enmore, and it's sold out. It's thousands of people. And in true Italian fashion. My dad goes, like, are you proud, Dad? <laughs> Ma, where are the people going to park? <laughs> That's all he was worried about. Oh my God, how you doing up the top there? Give us a cheer. Awesome, it's going to be a great night. It's great. There's been so much publicity around this show. Uh, it's been great. I've, I've really, really enjoyed it. 20 years in the business and we were here earlier and uh, we were here earlier doing um, sound check and rehearsals and I was outside just walking down the, you know, the Enmore Road here and, um, and, and I was just walking down. This gorgeous, beautiful girl. She was, I don't know, you know, somewhere in between 25 and 30, but just absolutely gorgeous. And I knew there was a lot of publicity surrounding this tour because she came up and she was all nervous. She was, oh my God. <sighs> Are you, are you Joe Avati? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm 41, I still got it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then she goes, my nonna loves you. <laughs> Seriously, that's all. But you know, this tour, this whole tour started because uh, a good friend of mine who's a great promoter, Mr. John Zachariah, he said, it's your 20th anniversary, what are we going to do? You can't just let it go past. We've got to do a big theatre to a big theatre run, and we've done that and it's sold out all over Australia. So I thank you very, very much for that. You know, and it's been an absolute pleasure. And, and he made me dig back. He made me go, you know, but, you know, I want you to do the greatest hits. I said, well, I can do that, but, you know, I need to also do some new material. And he made me go back and think about, you know, when, when I was younger and, and, and about all of our lives, really. And it was fantastic because I haven't done it in a while, you know. And so I'll start at the beginning. I was born 1974. I'm the eldest, uh, I'm 41, I'm the eldest of two boys in the family. Um, so how old, how long have my mum and dad been married? Quickly, quickly. Yeah, 42 years, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. For all the young people, very simple what you do. You want to know how old or how long an Italian couple have been married? Yeah, you get the eldest child at one year. <laughs> it's called Italian maths. <laughs> Very, very simple. Uh, 
And as you know, I grew up with my nonni. I did grow up with my nonni. And you know, the, the, the thing was, you know, you, we, we've got to love our nonni because, you know, they, they, they looked after us, they grew us up because it was hard from where they came from, wasn't it? That's why they came to Australia or even countries like Canada or America or England because it was difficult where they, where they were. And you can tell, you know how you can tell? Because when you look at nonno and nonna's wedding picture, have you ever, if you, have you, see, some of you, some of you have, haven't you? Like, think, think back, and if you have a next, when you go home, have a look at Nonno and Nonna's wedding picture, right? This is, the, this is how it is. On Nonna's happiest day of her life, this is Nonna. And Nonna's like this. And <laughs> some of my nonni have passed on now, and I, and I did the eulogy at all of their, all of, all of their funerals. And in, sometimes until you actually get to do the eulogy, you don't, you don't, there's some things you don't know about your nonni until you learn, you know, stuff about them. And like, I, I thought my nonni, we had a birthday for him. It wasn't his birthday. Because <laughs> all the young people here, like you guys, give us a cheer, all the teenagers in the room. <laughs> all right, so I go, th- uh, thank you, senora. Thank you, <laughs> Right. <laughs> Okumari, I should say. <laughs> right. Now, there are, I've got a lot of teenage fans, and you guys have got to know something about Nonni. You see, Nonni, they weren't registered. Like, you were registered, you were born on this day, you were registered on that day. No, it didn't happen for Nonni. No. Nonni, sometimes Nonni were born on this day, they were registered a week after. <laughs> And then they're not embarrassed to tell you, are they? Like, a happy birthday, compadre. Thank you very much. Really, it's one week ago, but thank you, you know. <laughs> That's what they have to go through. And, and even now, like they came to Australia, they came to Australia and they didn't go back to where they were from, either Sicily or Calabria, right? So I actually, for my nonna, because she didn't go back, I, I went on the computer and I did Google Earth, right? Because it's a new thing for them, Google Earth. Have you ever, have you ever tried to Google Earth where your, your nonna come from? I, I Googled Earth Calabria. <laughs> there was nothing there. <laughs> There was nothing there because you know why? Do you know how they do this Google truck thing? What they do is they get a Google truck which has got cameras 360 degrees all the way around it and it drives through all the little streets taking footage, right? Fair enough. But can you imagine this Google truck going through the little streets of Calabria? (laughs) The only shooting that would be going on (laughs) is from the houses to the Google truck. And then the Google truck driver won't come home, so they've got to Google to find out where the Google truck driver is. (laughs) Seriously, and and this is what they have to go through. Our nonni now have to, because you see, when our nonni came to Australia, there was a lot of Greeks, there was a lot of Italians, there was some Chinese starting to come here, but now there's everybody, all types of people are coming to Australia and they've got to get used to it. A friend of mine has got this butcher shop Right, and he's very sort of famous for his butcher shop. But, but he had this Muslim guy ring him up, right? And he, he rang him up, and, and this guy's very good at making his own small goods, but he had a Muslim guy ring him up, he goes, uh, is your meat halal? <laughs> <laughs> and I was there, I swear to God. He goes, eh. <laughs> eh. The beef and the chicken, no, but the pork, yes. <laughs> it's like the Jews, the Jews have got Passover, so the Italians, oh, pasta lasagna, pasta gnocchi, hurry up here. We're starving over here. <laughs> But this is what we had to go through, wasn't it? You know, and we form part of what's called the bridging generation, don't we, ladies and gentlemen? See, we didn't grow up with technology, but we, are, we have to teach our parents technology. We have to teach our parents the internet. And this is possibly one of the most difficult things <laughs> that you can ever have to do, right? See, people are already murmuring 
Right, you're already moving now. I moved to Melbourne about five and a half years ago. We've got a family friend of ours. He's not really that good with, you know, with the technology, but he's got no kids. So he treats me and my brother like his kids. He's very close. So he rings me up and we call him Teal, right? Because we're very close. We call him Teal, right? And he rings me up. Jo. I go, uh, yes, Teal. I want to learn the internet. <laughs> I said, well, there's only one, but we'll teach it to you anyway. <laughs> I said, you got the computer on? Yes. I go, what does it say? It says the username. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I said, all right, well, what's your username? I don't know. <laughs> I use your name. <laughs> I go, no, no. <laughs> but then, <laughs> then all of a sudden I hear this, I hear this, I swear I got hear this. I go, what are you doing? Because I'm talking to him on the phone. I go, right? I go, what are you doing? I don't know. It says to click here. <laughs> now, you're probably thinking, you're probably, you're probably thinking what I'm thinking, right? So if he doesn't know the username and he's doing this, there's no way, there is no way he's going to know the password. No way. <laughs> and I go, so Till, if you don't know the username, you don't know the password. No. Oh, password, I know the password. Oh, I know you know what. I said, what's the password? That's what he got. He goes, Donald Duck. <laughs> Daffy Duck. Bugs Bunny, Mickey Mouse, and Pocky Pig. <laughs> I said, how do you get a password like that? And I swear to you, he goes, I don't know. When I turn on the computer, I said, you need at least the five characters. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's going to be a fun night, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, <laughs> I'm having a great time. See, like I said, now the, the, the young people, the young people, the, the, the teenagers, you guys have got to know what we went through um, because we had, to, we had to grow up with Nonna because Nonna looked after us. There's no daycare. There's no babysitter. Nonna was babysitter. Right, and, and Nonna was our babysitter, you know, and, but even as we grew older, we still were very attached to Nonna, weren't we? Very, very attached to Nonna. Because remember when Nonna would ask you to go shopping? Huh? Does anyone remember that, huh? First of all, you get that phone call, right? Because Nonna makes you feel guilty. Hey, hi Nonna, if you do, hey. <laughs> What do you do now? Oh, I'm just, no, I'm not much in this, you know, watching. All right, you come a picking on up. We go to the shop. No, we just go to buy what you got, four things, and that's it. See, those of you laughing know that four things is a trunk full of food and seven hours out of your day. Right? There's no such thing as quattro cose, it's four things, <laughs> right? Right, so I picked Nonna up, we go to, I said, which one do you want to go to? She said, I don't know, we'll call this maybe. <laughs> <laughs> What's the other one, a woolly woolly? <laughs> right, <laughs> so you got a cause or a woolly woolly? Well, now they've got the new one, I'll do. <laughs> so, so we go there, we go shopping. And the first thing that happens, the first thing that happens is they go and buy the fruit, right? And when they go and buy the fruit, it's embarrassing, isn't it? Because when they pick up the fruit, 
They squeeze it. They push it on this. It's not good. What's right, Maduro? What do you mean it's not Maduro? It's got bruises on it. It's Maduro now. Nah, not good. They're not good. I love how they get the grapes. <laughs> you see when Nornu gets the grapes and he put them, you know where the kid's supposed to sit on the trolley? Nornu puts them there. By the time they get to the counter, they're all gone. <laughs> it's just all these stalks sticking out. <laughs> right, then we go to the cereal aisle. And because I stay with Nornu, she wants to make sure that I've got everything that I want to have. So she picks up a packet of Nutrigrain. And she goes, hey, you, you like us to go on flakes? <laughs> I go, no, they're neutral grain. Yeah, all the cornflakes. I said, no, I want Cocoa Pops. Ah, the black cornflakes. <laughs> <Okay>. Right. <laughs> so we finish. So we finish the shopping. We go, to the sh- we go back to the counter, right? But she forgets something. She goes, ah, oh, my name is pretty dear Lord. I've forgotten the oil. Go get me the oil. I'm going to get in line. Okay, no worries. So I go running around because obviously I'm a lot faster than her. So I go get the oil. I come back. And I'm looking for Nonna. Where the hell is Nonna? Where, where, where? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. A shopping cart full of food. And where's Nonna? In the express lane. <laughs> I got Nonna, what are you doing? It says items, items or less. Yeah, nothing. Or two goes. That's it. Nothing. I got it. I got Nonna, you can't stay. No, this one got too quick. Shut up. Hurry up. <laughs> Ma, shut up, shut, sit, sit, shut up. <laughs> Otherwise, next time I'll not bring you. <laughs> Weren't you the one who asked me what's going <laughs> on? That's nonna, you know, and the thing, <laughs> the nonna used to love the technology, right? Remember, did anyone remember buying your nonna one of those George Foreman grills? Remember that? Oh, yeah, my nonna loved it. I said, what do you think of the George Foreman grill? Oh, beautiful, this thing. I love it. You put the meat up there. It's a take out all of the fat, all the cholesterol, all the yucky stuff and live a nice, beautiful meat. Yeah, yeah. And that's nice. And then she goes, you know what I really love to do? I said, what? A nice bit of bread and I dip in the oil. <laughs> Totally defeats the purpose of the George Foreman grill, right? But that's what it was. That's what it was like because Nonna was our babysitter. And here's another thing that Nonna used to do, right? Now, I don't know if, like, we grew up with an Australian family next door to us, right? So sometimes, but Nonna would normally look after us. But one night, one night, we had, I don't know, a family emergency and we had to stay with the Australian family, right? <laughs> has anyone had to do, has anyone ever had to stay at your Australian friend's home? and have their mum read you a bedtime story? (laughs) Aussie bedtime stories are the best. (laughs) Beautiful characters, happy endings, lovely storylines. Man, have you ever had your nonna read you a bedtime story? (laughs) Every bedtime story starts like this. (laughs) Navon ti montagne di Calabria. My nonna would read Little Red Riding Hood. Now what? There was a big lupu with big dentes, big teeth, and he eat pura nonna. <laughs> I couldn't sleep for the rest of the week. <laughs> the other great thing about my nonna, right, which, which a lot of us had, was we had a, what I used to call a wog dog. <laughs> yeah. We all had dogs, right? or pets, but the pets were more Italian than us, weren't they? <laughs> because you see, my nonna didn't speak English, so she would speak to the dog in Italian, but at least we'd go to school, we'd learn English and Italian, but not the dog, no, the dog was always with nonna. <laughs> the dog was more Italian than us. <laughs> but the only problem with a wog dog was when it got sick, that was it, bad luck. <laughs> There was no vet for Nonna, no. No, no, this is my Nonna. I don't take myself to the doctor. I'm going to take all God. <laughs> and the food, the dogs used to eat pasta. None of this meaty bites or pal or this dog food. Right? No, my dog used to eat what my Nonna used to eat. The dog had high cholesterol, let me tell you. <laughs> 
Even the mice, even the mice at my nonna's house were well fed. Yeah, she'd put Parmigiano Reggiano on the mousetrap. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It was great though, we had a great time. And you know, things have changed. It's been 20 years. This is my 20th anniversary special that we're filming here tonight. And a lot has changed in 20 years, right? There are things that we had when we were growing up. And that's why I'm so glad there's a lot of teenagers here this evening because a lot of things that we had that we were growing up that you don't see anymore. You know, like you don't see the old Gwogum party with the long fingernail anymore. You don't see that. Anymore. <laughs> we know what you're doing. <laughs> you know, you don't see that party with the comb over. Remember the comb over? <laughs> you know what I love about the guys with the comb over? They had that comb over, but they walk around like no one knows. <laughs> then the wind comes. <laughs> Just cut it off, party. You don't see the compadre with the big bunch of keys hanging off here anymore, do you? <laughs> Remember that compadre and you can hear him coming a mile away. <laughs> I know we're Greeks and Italians, but how many houses in one day do you need to open? <laughs> right, it's ridiculous. And you know, I know some of you are following me. Like I said, I've moved to Melbourne. I'm building a house in Melbourne at the moment. I know, and my house has got its own Instagram page. And I know some of you are following it because you, you know, always write and say stuff. And it's funny when, you know, building the house. And it's funny when we, we build our houses, like we show each other, like we've never seen it before. You know, like, you know, compadre, come here, I'll show the house. I come here, I'll show you. Like, wow, I've never seen this brick before. What's... <laughs> What does this plastic here mean? I don't understand. Like, you know, and, and, and one guy wrote to me, he goes, oh, mate, are you going to put the lions? You're going to put the lions out the front of your head? Because you know what lions mean? That means that the house is paid off. Did you know that? Because you're going to put the lions, mate? You're going to put the lions? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm only just going to put one. The other one's in front of the National Australia Bank. And nonno was good. It was good growing up with nonno too, right? Because, see, the thing is, with our nonno, they, they, see, there was no rules for Italians, was there? You know, my nonno, there was no rules. And if you think I'm, I'm joking when I say that Italians didn't have rules, I'll give you two words and two words only, ladies and gentlemen. Water restrictions. <laughs> my nonno used to love water restriction time, right? Because they'd be out there hosing the front of the house you know, the concrete. Mark Wiley, water restriction, no worry. <laughs> My nonna used to love water restriction time. You know why? Because no one else in the neighbourhood used the holes and the pressure, unbelievable. <laughs> and he used to get upset, you know, because with the, with the, with the neighbours, there was always one good neighbour and one shit neighbour, wasn't there? Right, my nonno had a Greek neighbour and an Aussie neighbour, right? And he never used to get on with the Aussie neighbour, right? And I'd come, I'd go to his house one day, sometimes he's all huffing and puffing, because he always used to huff and puff, my nonno. Always used to huff and puff about something, something was wrong. One day I came, what's wrong, nonno? <sighs> I'm a Finnish. <laughs> I go, what's wrong? I go to the dottori. I said, oh man, I'm thinking, oh my God, he's got some sort of a terminal illness. He's got some sort of cancer. I go, what's wrong, no, no. <laughs> Dottori said, I can't drink no more vino. <laughs> no more vino was like the end of the world for my nonna, right? So there he was huffing and puffing. So I come to his house one day and he goes, my name is too low, Shaliano, this one here. It's too bloody Bruce. <laughs> I go, what's wrong with Bruce? To bloody Bruce, to come in there. My venerable nerve, to come in there. My to Bruce. I go, but what's wrong with Bruce? Man, he's got a branch that hang this much on mass harder than hands. I go, but the Greek name has got one that hangs a meter. But he's got a lemons. <laughs> oh my God. Like I said, there are a lot, 
a lot has changed. You know, there are a lot of things that we don't see anymore, right? There's a lot of things that you see. And, 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 and the teenagers, you guys have got to know that we had everything that you had. You know, we had everything that you have right now. We have it. But you just have better versions. <laughs> like you've got a Mac computer. What did we have? The Commodore 64. <laughs> you got an iPhone. We had a pager. You had an iPod, we had the Discman. <laughs> Remember the Discman? <laughs> How cool were you when you first got a Discman, huh? Hey. For the young people, if you don't know, it was a box like this and you used to put one CD in there and he used to spin around, he used to walk around. And Remember that, hey, hey. But I'll tell you, whoever invented, whoever invented the Discman must have been sitting down because you would move and that thing would skip. <laughs> the hell is wrong with that? Right, what else have you guys got? You guys have got Google. What did we have? Directory assistance. <laughs> or encyclopedias. Remember? Yeah. Every wog house had an encyclopedia. Yeah. What for? We didn't read it. <laughs> Shut up. Just deliver there so it looks like everybody's smart. Shut up. <laughs> And what are we teaching our kids these days? What are we teaching our kids? Because when we were growing up, when we got a little athletics, you used to come either first, second or third. And that was it, wasn't it? And if you didn't come first, second or third, you had to strive harder, didn't you? You had to strive to make it next year, make sure you got into the top three. But no, these days, no, that doesn't happen anymore. What are we teaching our kids? You either come first, second or third, or you get a participation certificate. <laughs> What are we teaching our kids? What is this saying to our kids? Hey, thanks for coming, but you're shit out. <laughs> right? Because, you know, the kids today, they don't play outside anymore. Have you noticed that? They don't play outside, no. They play, they play games inside that make them think that they're outside. <laughs> Remember we had toys, remember our toys? Remember we were too scared to even have a toy, remember that? Oh, Papa, I want a toy. A toy. <laughs> I just have one a toy for 20 years. <laughs> it's called a shovel. <laughs> you got a toy that us, I have kick in your ass, you understand? <laughs> We had to make up our own, who had to make up their own slip and slide using your old man's orange PVC, hey, hey, hey. Remember that, huh? And for extra slide, you used that palm olive, huh? Hey, hey, hey. We had to make up our own toys, <laughs> oh yeah. You know, like all these kids, they got, oh, what, they got Wii's and Nintendo's and Playstations and a Grand Theft Auto, and what did we have? Pin the tail on the donkey. <laughs> or remember this one, I Spy with My Little Eye, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, we were our own games, remember? Remember I used to play it, my old man used to hate it. You know, me and my brother would be in the back. I spy with my little eyes, something beginning with F, my old man. If you're not, shut up, I'll kill your mother. <laughs> <laughs> I spy with only one eye. <laughs> <laughs> That was our toys, you know, and, and the kids today, they don't have scabs. Remember when we were at school? When we were at school, the young people, there was no bark. There was no soft asphalt. No, we used to play. We used to play, it's like going out on the street on the tar. Remember that? You just scrape yourself and you get a scab. There's no scabs anymore. <laughs> kids don't have scabs, have you noticed? No scabs anymore. Remember when we used to go, we used to scabs on there and there and, there, and we, we, used to, we used to fear for our life, didn't we, for two reasons. The first one is because we had to go and tell mum. Because <laughs> remember, before you leave the house, your mum gives you the warning, if you break your arm, I break the other one. <laughs> All right. And... <laughs> And, and the other reason, the other reason why we used to hate it when we had scabs, all the young people listen to this because this doesn't happen to you guys anymore, no. Because when we used to get our scab, when we used to scratch ourselves to remedy it, to fix it, our mum used to have to put, yeah. do you remember that red stuff? As soon as it would touch our skin, we were like, ah! 
the Mercura crime. Do you remember Mercura crime? Yeah, it's banned. <laughs> Too much mercury, apparently. All this stuff that's banned now, right? Like, you know, like, you know, if you're, you're, you're a kid, right? When we were, remember Play-Doh? They still have Play-Doh. But next time you go, next time you go into a toy store, have a look in the toy store, have a look at the Play-Doh. Listen, this is what it says on the packet. Listen, Play-Doh, now non-toxic. <laughs> now. <laughs> what the hell were we playing with? And remember at school, remember the sport, everything's changed, you know. You know what I saw the other week in Melbourne? You're not gonna believe it. this probably happens here, right? We, I, was, I was going to this cafe, I was going to the bathroom, and I see this big room full of people with lab coats, glass bottles, and you know, people like fascinated with what they were. I go, what's going on here? Oh, we run classes and we teach Australians how to make tomato sauce. <laughs> What? <laughs> we teach we teach Aussies how to we, you teach Australians how to make tomato sauce, and they pay for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're paying for something that we used to get kicking, dragged, and screamed out of the bed <laughs> at six thirty in the morning. And these people are paying for it and they're so into it. Like one lady, excuse me, Giovanni, excuse me. Is one basil leaf enough? <laughs> put three, put how many you want in there. Do you remember when we used to make the tomato sauce, eh? What a production line that was, eh? Fun for the whole family stuck in the garage. And you better make sure that garage door's halfway closed because we don't want other people to see what we're doing in here. <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> and everyone's got their job and it's like a production line and who puts the, the, the giornale around and then you put them in the 44 gallon drum to boil and all the women go and clean and all the men, how long, how long, how long, how long, how long? How long? Ah, they get nervous, they get anxious, don't they? Because they can't wait to get to the end of the cooking process because that's when they get the chance to lift the lid off the 44 gallon drum to see if there's any red in the water. <laughs> yes, and those of you laughing knows what red in the water means, don't you? Yeah. That's just spakari butigi. <laughs> the bottle's broke and it's like the end of the world, isn't it? Then they count them on the floor, they get them out like dead people. One, two, three, four, five. Fifteen, sis Bacaro, fifteen. <laughs> then they look for the cousin whose job it was to put all the giornale in the newspaper. When he cagat the matto, fifteen, sis Bacaro. Next time for you, pastor, shoot her, shoot her. Oh my God, what a great, you know, they used to get angry at us. They used to get, you know, that's why times have changed, you know, times have changed. Remember like, even when we were playing sport, right? This was the other thing, when we were playing sport, you always knew, you always knew when you had Italians or Greeks on the team, because you, the father would be a psycho on the sideline. <laughs> like every Italian dad thought he was the Italian soccer coach, right? <laughs> didn't they, right? You know, because all the Aussies, oh, Ryan, you did so well. <laughs> Ryan didn't even touch the ball. <laughs> well, my our dad's like, get to the ball, get to the ball. Man. Get to the ball, man. You wait till we get home, wait till we get home. <laughs> then you get off the field like, Act natural, act natural. <laughs> That's why Italians are such good soccer players. They were too shit scared to get off the field, mate. 
Oh my God. Dads, Italian dads. Hey, Italian dads. You've got to love Italian dads, hey? But they made us who we are. You know, they made us who we are. And, and, and we're here for them, right? We're here because they, they disciplined us. They made us think the way we should be thinking and what we should be doing, right? And, but, you know, I had one of those dads who had an answer for everything. You know one of those dads? Oh, Papa, my room's too small. Oh, your room is too small. <laughs> Tonight, you sleep outside. <laughs> Big room, huh? not even a window. Look at that, huh? <laughs> Papa, I want some ice cream. Yeah, which flavour? I've got a five. Which one you want it? And they never knew how old you were, did they? No. How old are you now? Like, oh, I'm eight. Eight. When I was your age, I was already nine. <laughs> now, <laughs> I got a few surprises for you, ladies and gentlemen. I got a few surprises for you um, throughout the night. And uh, I'd like to uh, bring on my first surprise. We ran a competition. We ran a competition to find Australia's best Joavati impersonator. And this young kid won it from, uh, from Sydney. And he actually asked me if I don't mind if he actually gets up and does a minute for you. So can we get him out here? Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Andrea Binaggia. Get your microphone, Bella. We need you. Well, we've got, we've got a microphone for him, okay. How do you get it off? How do you get it off? <laughs> All right, you got it? All right. Okay, now, what routine? Uh, have you prepared for us? The walk was the uncle. The walk was the uncle? Yeah. Right. right, okay. So if you don't know what this routine is, basically, uh, my, you know, I had an uncle who used to speak English, but he used to stuff up the entire language. <laughs> right? And this is probably one of the most downloaded routines on, uh, on my YouTube channel. And Andrea is going to do it for us. And if you get stuck, I'll help you out. So, ladies and gentlemen, Andrea. So, you know the Wagos Yonko, right? He's been here for around 30, 40 years, you know, and he speaks Italian, I speak Italian, and he speaks to me in English, and he tells me these stories, and when he tells me these stories, he sounds so confident, but he stuffs up the words. And so this is one story where it went, I listen, listen, Mike, Mike. <laughs> you cannot never imagination. <laughs> You cannot never imagine I shin. What happened to me, my life at time? Oh. Now just a quick, 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 make a short story long. Just to make, just to make the short story long. My son, he bloody give me the nervous broke down. <laughs> I told him to hurry up and get married because the time is running out of us. So he bring home this gala with the big hair, the short skirt, the boob up like she looked like the singer from a longer time ago, what's called a Tina Tuna. <laughs> you remember Tina Tuna, right? She's the one who sang what's love got to do, got to do. <laughs> I not like this girl, she's always mean, 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 very jellyfish, this one. My where she go, my where she go with the big hair, the short skirts, my who she trying to depress? <laughs> and then my son called me, says, Daddy, eh, I know you don't like this girl, but we're gonna get married. Do whatever you like, I said, whatever take your fantasy. <laughs> oh, they get married, the men have the buck party with the strip. <laughs> 
the men, the men have the chicken tea party, the women, sorry, have the chicken tea party. <laughs> oh, they get married, they go holiday, they go to the moon, they come back, you know. <laughs> Hey, hang on a second. Oh, I never got a laugh on that line as big as you. <laughs> Keep going. Everything's all right for about six months. And then he calls me, says, Daddy, uh, bad news, we got separate. Ma, what happened? He reckoned him and this girl got no more chemicals. <laughs> he reckoned he'd lose the spark plug or something. <laughs> All right, not now, least of all last, least of all last, you know. Now, he's moving my ass, and every bloody night he's on the computer with a like, a friend called Antoinette or something. <laughs> he probably think they got a really good connection or something. Uh, this, this Antoinette is gonna be a bloody big butana. <laughs> every five minutes, the computer goes into a forest. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Andrea Finaggia. <laughs> uh, that's funny, man. I, don't, I, I didn't get some of those laughs that he did. Uh, but God bless the kids, you know. Well, I know I hassle you guys, but I'm just jealous. I'm just jealous that you guys can do whatever you want, whenever you want. These kids are so lucky, aren't they? Really, aren't they? Aren't they? The kids are so lucky. Those of you who have teenagers, because I grew up in the 80s. Who else grew up in the 80s? Yeah, remember the 80s? We had Duran Duran, Wham, remember that? George Michael. George Michael had an earring. I wanted to have one. <laughs> No, I remember when I said, I said, Pa, can I have an earring? He goes, all right, nice. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> now your earring for a long time. <laughs> it was tough growing up in the 80s, wasn't it? It was tough. We didn't even have a remote control for the TV. <laughs> we were the remote control. <laughs> Where's the young people? The young people, you guys have got to know, in the 80s, in the 80s, we used to have to get off the couch, walk all the way to the TV and change the channel manually. Fuck me off. And remember, sometimes the knob was broken and we had to go get the pliers to change the knob. Everything's so instant for these kids now, you know what I mean? Everything's so bang, there they take a picture, bang, there it is, right? This young girl over here, what's your, how old are you, love? 16. And what's your name? Katarina. I said, Katarina, have you, what, have you got an iPod? No? You got the iPhone, your iPad? Oh, you had an iPad? We had walk dads. <laughs> you got apps, we got slaps. You got Safari, we had Kumari. You know, and I, I'm into religions. I, I really like studying different religions. I got the Bible app. Has anyone got the Bible app? <laughs> it's pretty cool, the Bible app. But the, only, the other day, I got an update. <laughs> Don't we know what happened already? <laughs> But it's true, these kids, these kids, everything's so instant. When you take a picture, bang, it's there, isn't it? It's there, it's right there, right? And who's got an iPhone 5, an iPhone 6? You know, put up your hand, yeah, I can see. Right, yeah, anyone Samsung? Yeah, you can hear the Samsung people because they're happy. Hey, hey, we got a Samsung. Yeah. I mean, the iPhone, I don't normally complain about products, but this is a phone that can cook for you. It can clean for you. It can hang out the washing. It can read the palm of your hands, ladies and gentlemen. All we wanted to do is have a battery life that lasts more than 10 seconds. Seriously. <laughs> have you noticed, have you noticed that, that our phones are always plugged into the wall? In the year 2016, we've gone back to using a landline. <laughs> Darling, have you ever heard of a landline? 
a landline. There was a, that's how we used to make phone calls. Remember the landline? It was a phone on the wall and it used to come one metre. That was it, eh? And the whole family heard the conversation. <laughs> How exciting was it when the extension cord came in? Remember that? <laughs> Freedom! <laughs> you know, when we used to take pictures, you take a picture and it's right there. We used to take pictures. Listen to this, don't listen to this. <laughs> I'm so excited to tell you. <laughs> when we used to take pictures, we used to use a thing called a camera. You know that? And in the camera was film. Remember the film? Hey, you had the 12 shot, the 24 shot, the 36 shot. And if you're a big shot, you had the 48 shot. Remember that? <laughs> Right. And everyone was so precious about their shots, weren't they? Someone would be like, oh, take a picture of me. <laughs> like, I've only got one shot left. <laughs> I don't want to waste it, mate. <laughs> Remember that, right? <laughs> anyway, so what happens is we, we take all the pictures, right? We take the pictures out. Guess where we take the picture again? Hold on to your chair. <laughs> to the chemist. <laughs> To the chemist, why to the chemist? <laughs> why when he was learning about Nexium and paracetamol and learned how to develop film all of a sudden? I reckon, ladies and gentlemen, I reckon they should give it to the guy who cuts keys. <laughs> that guy's got more time on his hands. <laughs> that guy's got so much time on his hands, he learned how to repair shoes. <laughs> And remember, remember when you used to go to the chemist, remember what you'd do if you felt really good? What did we do? We ordered doubles. Woo. Doubles, two of each picture, two. And you couldn't just go in whenever you wanted. No, you had to wait for the chemist to call you to tell you to go and pick them up. Yeah. But because we had no mobile, we had to wait next to the landline. <laughs> And then we get the pictures and they come in that envelope, remember, and the whole family's around, you know, and the first one's always black. <laughs> the next one's always white. <laughs> Someone cuts off your head, you banana. Did you ever play a trick on your friends? Did you ever get your mate's camera, take a picture of your kulu and let them develop it? <laughs> hey, hey, that was the original Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I've got so many surprises for you, ladies and gentlemen. I've got another surprise for you now. Now, um, just so I know, just so I know, uh, I mean, I know there's a lot of Italians. Give us a cheer, all the Italians in the room. There's everything. Uh, how many non Italians? How many? Okay, all right. There's a fair few of you. Okay, all right. See, I've got. I've got a, 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 you know, there's, there's kids in the audience, there's their parents, and there's the nonni, okay? So I want to do a joke for the nonni. Now, before I was doing gags, and I was doing a few, mainly in English, but I'd litter it a little bit with Italian, but I want to do a joke in Italian for the nonni. But for those of you who don't understand Italian, I want to bring out someone to translate for you, right? <laughs> and I want to bring out someone to translate for you, and... The only person who I, who I have here tonight who can translate for me is obviously another comedian, and that is my very good friend, Tahir. Thank you, Tahir. Thank you very much. Now, Tahir, I'm going to do a joke in Italian. Actually, it's not in Italian. It's actually in, in my, where my parents come from, in their dialect, in Calabrese. Oh, oh good. I, uh, I actually majored in that. <laughs> What do you, what do you... <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> what do you mean you majored in Calabrese? What do you mean? Uh, uni, I went to uni and majored in... Uh... You went to uni to major in Calabrese? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where'd you go, University of Five Doc? <laughs> <laughs> They've actually got a tape, I think. <laughs> okay, all right, so I'm going to start it off. I'm going to say it in Italian and, and I'm going to do one line and then you do one line. You happy with that? That's it. So we all understand and get involved. Right? Here we go. Okay. All right. Here we go. Aruno, allora, start again. Start again. <laughs> allora c'era sta bella coppia che celebravano 60 anni di matrimonio. 
old Italian couple <laughs> celebrating their 60th, 60th wedding anniversary. Allora decidi di per andare in ta stessa stanza, in ta stesso l'albergo, a onde ero 60 anni prima. <laughs> to celebrate the 60th wedding anniversary, um, they went back and booked in the original hotel where they first did their, uh, you know. Allora Pascalo, marito, in questo bagno che si lava i denti, si faceva barba, sta facendo tutto bello. Mm? Pascalo, the man, walked into the bathroom and he, you know, shaved, he, grooming, grooming, he basically groomed himself. E Maria, moglie, trasse in tuo bagno. Maria, the wife, walked into the bathroom. E ci faceva... Oh, Pascal. I can't do that. <laughs> You're a good actor, mate. She walks in the bathroom and says, Oh, Pascal. Oh, Pascal. You want to move into a vest and a poco sexy patia? I would like to wear something very sexy for you tonight. Pascal, che momento mi metto a vesta rossa o a vesta gialla? Should I wear the sexy red dress or the sexy yellow dress? E Pascal ci fa ciò. I don't care. <laughs> You're pretty good at this calibration. Allora Maria, torna a stanza e se mente entra in tuo letto. So then Mar Maria walks into the bedroom and jumps underneath the sheets. Ma non si mentiva a vesta rossa o a vesta gialla. She didn't choose the yellow dress or the red dress. E ho tutta nuda. She went in naked. <laughs> Scandalo. <laughs> Scandalous. Allora Pascali, va in questa stanza e si mette pure io in tuo letto. So Pascali walks in the bedroom and also jumps underneath the sheets. E cominciò tocca la gamba. And he felt her leg. A mano tutto grazzo così. And he felt her arm. O stomaco. And he felt her stomach. And she faci, oh Maria. And said, oh Maria. Ma non sacci quale veste ti mentista, a russa o a gialla. I'm not sure whether you chose the red dress or the yellow dress. Mamma no, è una strada in ciapotini, fai. You could have ironed it. It's a pleasure to be here, Joe. Thanks so much. Thank you, Ty, here. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, that's one of my favorite routines to do. We don't do it very often. That's why I thought we had to do it. You know, Ty here was here. We had to, we had to do it, you know. Uh, beautiful couple down here. How long have you guys been together? No, not you two blokes, no, no.
14 years, yeah. You can always tell the new couple. You know, you can always tell the new couple because uh, <laughs> when, they, when you guys go shopping, when you first went shopping, you know, when you first go shopping, you can always tell the new couple because, you know, the girl's buying the dress and she's all like, oh my God, I'm going to buy the dress. And the husband's is there like this. And they'll pick out something ugly and they'll go, oh, it's beautiful. And then, you know, when they progress later on throughout the relationship because they end up on that chair. <laughs> the poor bastards here, you know. Because I never had any luck with the, you know, I never had any luck with the girls. I, I remember before I started this, before I started this, I actually, um, uh, I was a food scientist at Streets Ice Cream, right? And um, anyway, we had a Christmas party and we had a Christmas party and one of the girls got a bit too drunk and my boss goes, listen, Joe, she lives around the corner from your house. Can you just drive her home and make sure that she gets home? And I'm like, oh, please, I don't want to do that. I really don't want to do that because, you know, I've got to go out with my girlfriend tonight. If she smells there was another car, a girl in the car, if she sees her hair, I'm gone, I'm dead. He goes, please, we can't let her get into a cab. So ladies and gentlemen, I did the right thing. I took her home. I didn't, I just you took her home. I quickly opened the door, I let her get out. I just had to go, I was very nervous, you know. I got home, I got dressed, I went and picked up my girlfriend. We're on the way, we're on the way to the movies. Right? We're just before the Lane Cove Bridge there, right? We're stopped at the lights, right, on Victoria Road. I look down, don't I see a high heel shoe? <laughs> so, oh my God, I'm dead, I'm dead. So I'm, I'm trying to distract her. We pass the Lane Cove Bridge, you know, they're making all those apartments. Oh my God, darling, look at all those apartments down there. She's looking, oh, where, where? I grab the shoe. I throw it out of the window. <laughs> Mate, I got away with it. I got away with it, buddy. Until we got to the movies and I get out and she's fumbling. She goes, honey, have you seen my other shoe? <laughs> <laughs> now, I never had any luck, you know, and, and a lot of people ask me, uh, you know, about my private, that's a little bit about my private life. There's something else I'd love to share with you, ladies and gentlemen, because it shows, again, how things have changed. Uh, two and a half years ago, I had the pleasure of finding out that I was a father to a little girl in Toronto, right, which is fantastic, and as you can imagine, now I have to tell my parents. <laughs> No, they were supportive, but you know, and, and, and my dad came down, and dad came down, and I, and I told dad, and uh, you know, and he said, son, we're, we're here to support you, whatever you want to do. I said, well, she's my daughter, I'll do everything I need to do, and they were very supportive. But I said to my dad, dad, just under no circumstance, just don't tell mum until I fly up for Christmas, because I want to tell her on my own, right? So it's not something you want to say on the phone. I said, you know, so I had everything ready, I had the photo ready, I had everything ready for mum. Anyway, so I sat down with mum, I said, mum, I said, I've got to tell you something, but don't worry, I'm not sick, you know, and I'm not going to jail, it's, you know, everything's fine, you know, it's, everything's all right. And she goes, you know what she says? She goes, I already know. <laughs> and now I'm cursing my dad. I said, Dad, not to say anything. I said, what do you mean you already know? Mums know these things. <laughs> she goes, oh, it's all right, I know you're gay. <laughs> No, mum, I'm not gay, but that's all right, you know. And the reason why I tell you this story is now because my mum has now become a nonna, ladies and gentlemen. Eh? How fantastic is that? My parents are grandparents now. And don't they change? <laughs> don't they change? Who's a new nonna? Anyone here a new nonna? Yeah, look at you, look at you. No, no, but you nonna. Hey, don't they become people you've never remember seeing before? <laughs> right? You know, we had my nonno's birthday. It was his 90th birthday. We had it was 18 cousins. Some of them are married with their children, the great grandchildren. Everyone's there. It's really noisy. Nonna's in the kitchen. There's 50 people everywhere. Everyone's going crazy. And my cousin says to her little daughter, right? She goes, and it was nonna's great granddaughter. She goes, Ah, don't touch. Otherwise, mum will give you a smack. <laughs> nonna, with bionic hearing, comes out of the kitchen. <laughs> Ah, you not touching the kids. <laughs> when did this legislation pass Parliament? <laughs> Must have been after my last Jaffa because I didn't remember nothing. <laughs> that 
Zorra, lascialo stare! Just un bambino! No worry! They even say I love you! I've never heard these words ever! I've never heard these words ever! Oh my God, and my mum wants me to settle down now. She wants me to settle down, you know, and, and I say, I don't know, I don't know, what do I what do? I do? What, what's, what's the secret? You know, before, before we finish up this show, I want to say, before, you know, but what's the secret? What, I, I don't know, you know, and if you're a young couple or if you're going through a rocky time or if you're a young guy or a girl and you're thinking about, you know, how, what's the secret, you know, when, when you find somebody that you want to settle down with, what you've got to do is you've got to ask your old Italian relatives because, you know, they never got divorced, did they? No, they stuck it out, right? And they stuck it out, you know, and they stuck it out because, you know, I was told you I used to have an Australian neighbour. I learned a lot from this guy. And one day I remember seeing him, right, and, uh, and he said, oh, my God, Joe, I need to speak to you. It's urgent. I go, what's wrong, mate? He goes, oh, you're not going to believe this. Mum and dad, 35 years of marriage and they're filing for a divorce. I said, why? Oh, they yell and scream at each other. Mum throws stuff at him. She calls him names. Sometimes in the middle of dinner, the old man slams the plate down, heads out into the backyard. The whole neighbourhood can hear what the fight's about. Well, what seems to be the problem? <laughs> well, that's every Italian couple I know. That's my mum and dad talking about the phone bill. Because <laughs> there was no such thing as divorce with the older Italians. Right? If you didn't like one another, bad luck. <laughs> And there were some great fights, wasn't there? Some great, I remember. <laughs> I remember, I don't know, it was Sunday morning, about seven o'clock in the morning, my dad comes running into my room, Joe, get up, get up now. Go in the lounge room, get all the books, get all the encyclopedia and throw in the rubbish. <laughs> and what for? Because your mum knows everything. <laughs> You know, and I, and I don't know, I don't know what the secret is, you know, and I, and I think for, for, you know, if I ever met a girl and I wanted to settle down, or for the young people, or even if you're going through some marital problems, ask the older generation, because they know, and I found this Kumpari 52 years of marriage, 52 years, and I felt compelled, and I said, Kumpari, I go, what's the secret? And you know what these Italian guys are like? You gotta treat the wife nice, buy nicer things. And when we have the 25th anniversary, me, I take my wife to Italy. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good, compadre. All the way from Sydney to Italy in those days is a big thing. Go, How do you even beat that? What did you do for your 50th anniversary? <laughs> I go to Italy and I pick her back up. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sydney. Thank you.